Say you love me. Stop. Say you love me. It hurts. Say you love me. It's supposed to be sexy. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Say you love me. Stop. Say you love me. It hurts. Say you love me. It's supposed to be sexy. It hurts. It is sexy. Say you love me. Say you love me. Oh, girl, I love you. Get off me. Ah! I don't know about you, but I definitely found that video difficult to watch. I was not in a physically abusive relationship. I speak very openly about what my relationship was like. It was more verbally and emotionally abusive, but I feel like there's a special place in my heart for women who have experienced physical abuse at the hands of men. And I know it's a very difficult thing to leave. Abusive relationships in general are very difficult to leave. And so I'm not placing any judgment on Summer Walker. I'm also not placing any judgment on her partner. I just want to share what an abusive relationship looks like and some steps that you can take to leave it if you're ready. All of this will be in your time. I think everything that happens in our life is supposed to happen at the time it's happening, the way it's supposed to happen. And there are lessons for all of us and Summer Walker and her partner are going through their own sort of life lesson. I do not claim to be the person who is giving advice to everyone. I'm only sharing about things that worked in my life and sharing the sort of blueprint that works from the book Women Who Love Too Much because it changed my life and I just think it was a great perspective. It really looks at relationships that are, are toxic like this and abusive as addictions that the focus is on women. So in this video, I'm not gonna be talking about um, areas for men to, to learn and grow. I have some resources in the description box that you can look at for both abusers and, and victims or survivors. And if you are a man or a woman who tends to be the abuser, I would, I would really encourage you to seek help. Uh, I think you can find it in a lot of different ways. You can find it looking directly to God. You can find it um, in self-help books. You can find it in therapy. There are a lot of different ways that you can end the cycle of abuse to someone else. If you've been paying attention to Summer Walker at all, maybe you have, maybe you haven't because she's not, she's not that famous. She's not like Beyonce famous or Kim Kardashian famous, but you know, she's had some hits and um, her boyfriend producer London on a track has really helped um, fuel her, her stardom. And I have not paid very close attention to their relationships. I tend not to really get involved in celebrity relationship type things, but I know that a lot of people are looking at celebrities as relationship goals, as people, you know, who are living a sort of lifestyle that they would like. And so they get very involved in their personal life and what it is they're doing. I tend not to do that. Um, I prefer to gather information based on what they share themselves and typically in their music, what they share about their life. Because I think Summer Walker really shares her personal life. She writes her own music. And I, I think, you know, music that is honest and reflective of what you're going through, like really hits the, the best and ends up being some of the most cathartic and, and deep meaningful music that you could ever hear which is why i really enjoy a lot of uh, what summer walker creates so in her music she has shared um breakups to makeup sort of type relationships things that you know generally sound toxic but toxic does not necessarily mean abusive i think two people can have like really poor communication um have like problems in the relationship that don't cross the line to be abusive um, but in her case, if you're wondering at all what an abusive relationship looks like, it's this. This is what an abusive relationship looks like. So in addition to, you know, this sort of breaking up and getting back together, um, in one of my other videos, I talk about signs of abusive relationships and I use Kenya Moore's relationship as like the example for what that might look like. Um, when you're just looking at this video, because this video is really all I need um, there's all this other stuff, but this video is very, very telling. So you have to consider there's a person in the back laughing, um, which signals to me that there is an enabler in the situation. And there's typically someone who, um, excuses bad behavior about the relationship and makes you doubt yourself 
when you're in the relationship in addition to the partner who may practice gaslighting um gaslighting is a term that i really um within the last three years learned i did not know gaslighting was a thing um but it's something that i experienced a lot in my relationship and if i think one of the best people gaslighting right now is trump uh, so if you just watch anything he does watch him talk to any reporter and his response is typically one of gaslighting. He doesn't answer questions directly. He blames the other person and the other person ends up being like shocked. Like your attack is coming out of nowhere. I don't understand why you said that, why you're so upset. That's gaslighting. And in relationships, it's typically you're walking on eggshells. You have no idea like what sets them off, what's getting them upset. And so you're really trying not to do that thing, even though you don't know what it is. Also, just looking at the video, I think it's important to, to realize that her partner is filming this he has his camera in one hand and his hand around her throat in it with his next hand and the content of the video is disturbing um if you look closely you can see that he is moving his thumb in a way that is going to cause more pain to her um it's not cute i really hope all of this you're getting it's not cute. That's not fun. Um, some people, because this is not like, I fully respect um, the BDSM community. And I, I think that kind of behavior of wanting harm and wanting to inflict harm is acceptable within their own confines, right? Those folks have very clear rules um, for pain tolerance. They have... Um, a word, a signal word for when to stop. In this video, Summer Walker says stop. She says stop. She doesn't really look like she's enjoying it um, and is visibly in pain or disturbed by, you know, when he's moving his thumb in that specific way to put pressure on her windpipe or I think it's um, one of the arteries in the neck, whatever that is causing the pain. She appears to be in pain. I, I don't think it's right to compare this to a BDSM um, situation because it, it does not appear that there's consent here. If you want someone to inflict pain on you, you've talked about it. You've gone over, like, what do you do? Um, you know, in some extreme cases, some people pass out. There's rules for what happens if people pass out. Like, I am not afraid of um, discussing different types of sexual behavior or different things that turn people on. I want to stress that this is probably not that. That this clearly what we're seeing is someone being abused. I think it's very important to stress that what someone decides to record, put on camera, and then share with the world is usually less significant, less bad than what's actually happening behind closed doors when they know no one else is watching. So if you're thinking about, okay, he recorded this video and he put this up because he thinks it's not that big of a deal, what does he think is a, a big deal? Like how far is he taking these sort of painful experiences with her that he feels comfortable putting this up, but maybe has something else that he wouldn't put up. I always think about that when people are doing videos or um, someone is being disrespectful or crossing boundaries in front of other people. If they are willing to cross a certain boundary in front of people, then you can only imagine that the boundaries they cross when no one else is watching are out of this world. So just think about that. I want to remind you that the average time it takes a woman to leave an abusive relationship is seven times. I think it takes two toxic people to be in an abusive relationship. I do not place all the blame on an abuser. Um, I think people treat you how you allow them to treat you. And the way you allow people to treat you is the way you treat yourself. So it's very important, based on the book, <laughs> Women Who Love Too Much, it's very important for you to focus on you. Focus on getting yourself healed, um, getting yourself to a place where you have raised your standard of being treated to one where it's full of respect, full of kindness, full of love. There are so many people out there who want to love you and who want to love you well. This is stuff I had to tell myself too. I really thought my ex was it. 
I thought he was my soulmate and that was it. There's nobody else I would be able to love like this. Nobody else would be able to love me like this. Bullshit. It's not true. It's so not true. And when you allow yourself to be in this period of you're not going to allow yourself to be um, influenced by, you know, all this negativity, all this abuse, you will open yourself up to a different kind of love love for yourself and allowing someone else to love you in a really true loving way that is full of kindness full of everything that you've ever wanted in a relationship it can happen i'm telling you it can happen like are you here with me you can have a, a relationship full of love and care and and just like goodness it can just be lovely most of the time every relationship will go through stuff but relationships should not be full of disrespect it should have no disrespect at all i'm not saying that you know couples fight there may be some time where you know someone says something they, they regret that kind of stuff that's normal but your relationship should have a baseline of kindness and love okay i like to tell folks who are in abusive relationships focus less on whether you should leave or stay and just focus more on yourself that's it just focus on you because either the relationship will change or it will end but the goal is that you become a better person so that you do not end up in another relationship like this after you've let go of this anxiety of i have to go i have to go you don't have to go right now you don't have to go you need to go when it feels best for you so there are a lot of things that need to be in place before this happens and so you know working on yourself is one thing but if you have children that's like another big thing to consider um there are a lot of organizations in communities that are specifically geared toward helping you know survivors of abuse and i would encourage you to look for that in your community um they typically offer shelters uh, i mean I think we all know that shelters are not the best place for women or for children. Um, but if you're in a particularly dangerous situation, it may be a better option than what you're in right now. Um, a lot of these organizations have advocates who really teach you what abuse is. I know for myself, I did not know I was being abused for a long time. I think I just thought it was supposed to be like that, that you know, it was my duty as a woman to allow him to vent and, and say whatever it is that he needed to say. Um, that's really not how a relationship should be. And so there are folks who will educate you, who will help you become independent, because I know, you know, some of these relationships have a lot of financial abuse in them as well. I think one of the biggest things when you have children is to create a plan for how you're going to leave and where you're going to go and what the restraining or like all this there's so many steps that i would never tell anyone that you need to leave now you need to leave when it's good and right for you um and just because uh, a man has been abusive doesn't mean he's going to always be abusive i think it's definitely difficult for their behavior to change if they don't see the need or if they really don't see a problem or they get everything they want um, it's difficult to change and so I really don't expect everyone to change but there are some men who learn from their mistakes who become better more evolved human beings and so it's in your best interest like really to limit the outside information that you're getting from folks in your lives and do what feels best for you start to get in touch with your intuition listen to your gut and you'll you'll be fine like you the the goal is for you to get good with you and like once you focus on that i think everything else is going to fall into place if i haven't said this already read the book women who love too much i'm telling you that book changed my life i know there are a lot of other books on abusive relationships and i've read a couple other books i'm not recommending them because to me none of them covers as in depth as women who love too much and outlines all the steps for you to take to heal one of the points that i really like to stress and make here on my channel is that an abusive relationship takes two toxic people i do not like focuses on abusive relationships as one person being the victim who is doing nothing wrong and the other person being the abuser who's doing everything wrong that's in my understanding that is not how it works i know that there are some people who think 
they're innocent in this situation um they didn't do anything wrong that this person is just being mean to them and they haven't done anything but i'm telling you you attract what you are and so there's some part of yourself that needs healing if you are attracting a person who is disrespecting you if you are attracting a person who is not loving you properly that's something about you that's energy you're giving off that you need to heal and so any focus on um, abusive relationships that doesn't focus on the woman healing as if there's nothing wrong with the woman is something that I, I don't ascribe to. This is like my takeaway. I think you need to focus on you and healing yourself. Um, I say this with so much compassion and so much empathy because it's something I went through. I'm in a place now where I love myself. I like myself a lot. Um, I think my self-esteem is pretty high and my standard for how people treat me is just leveled up and that I don't tolerate any sort of slight disrespect. I communicate that in a way I'm not afraid of people being upset or leaving because I'm saying how I feel. I'm saying how I feel because it's important for me to maintain boundaries so that I am being treated well. And I hope that if you are in an abusive relationship, you really take the time to work on yourself, um, to spend less time working on improving your partner and thinking about what it is in your life that you would like just for yourself. What do you want your life to be like? You can create that. I, I promise you, I assure you, if you follow the steps in Women Who Love Too Much, I really do think your life will be changed. So let me know what you thought about this video in the comments and thank you for watching. I'm sending light and love to you.